A safe, simple and effective handling system is a must on all farms with livestock. Our systems and how we operate them can have a big impact on not only animal performance but also the well-being of the handler. During this video we have teamed up with both farmers and industry experts including animal behaviourist and scientist Dr Temple Grandin to help you design a cattle handling system with a focus on animal welfare and handler safety. We've all had experiences where we're handling cattle and it doesn't go right. It doesn't go right when we're getting them out of the field and then when we get them across the road they'll step onto that tarmac which they've never seen before and they think it's a thousand feet deep and we get them to the yard and then they're wound up and then that's when accidents happen. A few years ago I was loading up a big Solaire bull and we're in a bit of a rush and other things have gone wrong and you know we got we at the time we had what I thought was a pretty good loading facility obviously not good enough and he got past me or rather the way he got past me was by hoofing me out the way with his head and I landed in the railings then ended up in A&E and so therefore it is a good investment not just for yourself but also for your family to invest in good cattle handling facilities. There's some good evidence that cattle grow better and taste better at finishing suggesting that selection for improved temperament may have some great benefits alongside improving the safety on your farm. How a cow behaves whilst handling is affected by her experiences and also her innate temperament, that is, her genetics. And it's this that gets passed on from one generation to the next. So if you keep a calf from a flighty cow, it's quite likely the calf will be flighty too. So alongside the other things discussed in this video, selecting quiet cows and bulls for breeding will improve the temperament of your herd and ultimately make handling easier and safer. We put this in about 10 years ago. This is an old dairy collecting yard. It used to be a dairy farm before we came. Uh, and so we had a given area that we wanted to try and squeeze a handling system in. Um, otherwise, we we're going to have to put new concrete down, etc. We spent a lot of time actually on Temple Grandin's website looking at ways we could do it. Uh, and it just so happened in the end, we found a prefabricated IAE version, which happened to fit into the footprint an animal lives in a sensory-based world, not a word-based world. So cattle tend to remember stuff they see, they feel, they hear. You know, for example, if you clump them on the uh, head with the head restrainer, that animal will remember that, and then the next time through they're going to stop and not want to go in the head restrainer because you accidentally caught them like this. It's really important for people not to scream and yell at cattle because screaming and yelling has intent. They know you're mad at them. Or maybe just a generator or a motor running in the background that doesn't have intent. The flight zone is the animal's personal space. And that, what affects the size of the flight zone is three things. There's genetics, the amount of contact with people, and the quality of the contact with people. Rough handling versus quiet, low stress handling. And cattle that see people every day in pasture rotation, they tend to get a much smaller flight zone than cattle that seldom see people. One thing, you want to make sure this yellow hose isn't laying on the floor where cattle can see it. They can't see it here, but you live have that yellow hose laying on the floor and then you want them to walk over that, that doesn't work. But let's say I've got cattle lined up in this race. Now, okay, if I stand right here, they can see me. What you want to do is stand back here against the wall until it's time to move them. But let's say there's a line of cattle in here and I want them to go forward. If I just quickly walk back by them about like this, as I go by, they shoulder of each animal to go forward. But a big mistake that people make all the time, let's just say that the cattle's head's right here. They'll stand here at the head and try to poke the butt. Let's say they're lying here, standing back here outside their flight zone, I step forward and just quickly walk back by maybe three or four cattle, they'll just go forward for me. But you have to do kind of a quick movement, movement otherwise they'll back up on you. Well, the main basic principle, like the, what makes this design work, is you're coming around here, almost like a hairpin, and going back to where they come from. The cattle want to go back to where they come from, and so a really good place for the handler to stand is right there. So as they circle around there, they go around the handler. I call that working the pivot of the crowd gate instead of working on the outside radius. Another good thing about this design 
it'll fit in a lot of old barns. Now we've got a fairly decent non-slip floor. Now of course they always tend to stop here at the scale because they've got to step up. And one of the problems with flooring is that it slowly wears out and people don't realize it's slowly wearing out. You get more cattle running out really fast. That needs to be really good non-slip flooring in front of the crush. So they don't slip and fall down as they jump out of there. But the other thing I've found is you get the handling calmed down back there, then everything that goes on in here is gonna be a whole lot calmer. I call it, you fix the back end, the front end will fix itself. One of the reasons I'd like solid sides here is I want to not have them viewing all the vehicles and stuff around. And you've got to make sure that when you're loading them, the trucker doesn't just pop up right here. Boom! There's the trucker. And now the cattle turn back on somebody, which is super dangerous. The most important sides to block in is outer perimeters. And, and what some people are doing on the single file race is the outer perimeter where people don't work make completely solid and your inner inner one where people work having having where they can see the person so you can just work on the ground but if you have an open side where you're working you have to stay out of the flight zone until you're ready to move the animals so you have to make sure that the race is not so close to the wall that um, staying outside the flight zone is impossible you want to stay outside the flight zone and then when you want to move the animals you step into the flight zone and you move your animals. Cattle coming on around the bend, and as they come on around the bend, there's a metal piece there going across the bottom of the single file race. That's a very common thing that makes cattle stop, and it's, it's something the gate slides on. It'd be better to design the gate so you don't have to have a metal bar right there. One of my students, um, uh, Dennis Wilson, did a nice paper at a small abattoir showing how sharp shadows made cattle handling more difficult uh, because animals were stopping and refusing to walk over the sharp shadows. And that shadow will be different in the afternoon than it is now. A little string on that gate, see how it's wiggling now? That can stop them. Now if it's still, it's less likely to stop them, but if the wind's making it wiggle, that's something that they can see. Then you've got a picture of that yellow hose. That's something I don't want to see out here across here because they're absolutely not going to go over it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. For more information, listen to the stress-free stockmanship webinar with Temple Granding, which is now available on our YouTube channel.